Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Is your daily driver an EV? And if so, do you tend to drive less than 20 kilometres each day? Well, if you do, you're in good company. Data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics shows that the average Australian travels less than 20 kilometres each day in their car. And I suspect that this is probably the pattern across most of the developed world where people these days tend to live in urban settings and work not far from where they live. Anyhow, I travel 14 kilometres each day and when I get home in the evening, I plug my car into the wall outlet so that I know it'll be fully charged when I get up the next day. But it occurred to me the other day that perhaps this is not the best thing to do for the battery. After all, there's quite a bit of information out there in the public domain that suggests that fully charging or indeed fully discharging lithium ion batteries on a daily basis can shorten their life. So I decided to do a bit of research into this subject and after spending a lot of time searching around the internet, I found some very useful information that's been put up there by the Battery University. Yeah, who knew? There's a Battery University. Anyhow, the boffins there have spent a lot of time testing and studying the results of putting lithium ion batteries under stress tests by changing the way they're charged and discharged and changing the environmental conditions. And they've pulled all that together and published it in some nice tables and charts. And from those, you can tell what would be the best charging regime for your particular situation. So I'm gonna share that with you now. We'll zoom in over here and check it out. And after we've done that, I'll come back and give you my final thoughts on the matter. Okay, so what you can see here is the website of the Battery University. And I'll put the URL into the description section of this video in case you wanna go there. And this document is called BU808, How to Prolong Lithium-Based Batteries. And it's a very lengthy document. It covers a lot of chemistry and science. I'm not going to go right through it today. I'm just gonna cherry pick some of the useful data that we can look at that'll help us determine how best to look after our batteries. Now, the first thing to consider when you're thinking about the longevity of a battery is the depth of discharge. So this is how much energy you're taking out of the battery on a regular basis. And it's expressed as a percentage of the, the fully charged battery. So on this row here, uh, this is where you've discharged the battery on a regular basis, 100%. In other words, you've taken every last drop of energy out of that battery before you recharged it. And if you were to do that, then you could only reasonably expect to get 300 cycles from that battery. So it'd be dead in less than a year or unserviceable. One thing I wanted to point out is that this column here is dealing with nickel manganese cobalt or lithium ternary chemistry. And this is the most common chemistry used in electric cars today. They are transitioning towards lithium phosphate batteries, but we're not there yet. Um, and the majority of cars still have this older chemistry. And indeed my car has this chemistry. So that's the chemistry that I'm going to look at today. So that's 100% of uh, discharge. On the other end of the scale, if you were to just take 10% of the energy out of the battery each time you used it, you could reasonably expect to get 6,000 cycles from that battery. So that would give you probably 16 years of battery life, a lot more than if you were to use 100% every day. Now there's one other thing I wanted to draw your attention to here. Up in this yellow box, it tells us that the tables do not address ultra fast charging and high load discharges that will shorten battery life. So what they're calling out here is that if you're someone who charges your battery at a high speed charger every day, or what Tesla call a supercharger, then that will also shorten the life of the battery. And you may not even get these numbers that we're seeing in this column here if you're doing that. Now I know for many people, if you live in high rise apartments, you may not have access to power points in the basement and you may have no choice but to charge your car at a supercharger on a regular basis. But for those people that do have access to a power point, you're much better off using the low speed charging method a trickle charge than to charge at high speed. It's much better for the battery to be charged slowly and it puts less stress on the battery. Okay, so that's depth of discharge. And then there's the other parameter that we need to look at. So this is how high we charge the battery each time we use it. And it's expressed by the university. They've used a voltage level, cell voltage level. That doesn't mean a lot to people who are not battery chemists or battery engineers. So I prefer to look at the column over on the right where they express it in terms of available stored energy. In other words, the percentage of a total charge in that battery. So in this row here that's bolded, this is 100% state of charge. 
And if you were to charge then to 100% each day or each cycle, you could expect to get 300 to 500 cycles from that battery. So that's again not not very not a very long living battery if you're only getting 300 to 500 cycles from it. So the question would be then, well, what's the ideal maximum state of charge that we want to go to? And the clue to that is up the top here. In terms of longevity, the optimal charge voltage is 3.92 volts per cell. And if we look down this column here on the left, we can see there's 3.9 down here. So that's as near as damage to 3.92 volts. And if we were to charge to that level each time, we could expect to get 2,400 to 4,000 cycles from the battery. So we're now getting up well over 10 years of battery life, and that's obviously going to be preferable. So what does that mean in terms of the actual state of charge as we know it? Well, it, it equates to a state of charge of 60 to 65%. So what we're seeing here is that if you're not someone who needs to travel a long distance each day, you're actually better off not charging your battery above 65%. So that's quite interesting. Now, another thing that's interesting is some of the footnotes here to this table. And the one that uh, really caught my attention is this one here. Experiment, Chalmers University of Technology, Sweden, reports that using a reduced charge level of 50% state of charge increases the lifetime expectancy of the vehicle lithium-ion battery by 44 to 130%. So that's really significant. It's significant for two reasons. Firstly, because the university in Sweden only focused on the situation of lithium batteries in motor vehicles, whereas this, the rest of this article is referring to tests that were done on batteries in all sorts of applications. So it could be mobile phones, it could be laptops, it could be all sorts of electronic devices. The Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden just focused on electric cars, and they found that by just charging the battery to 50% state of charge each time, you could get 44 to 130% longer life from the battery. So that's pretty significant. Okay, so we've looked at the effect of depth of discharge and we've looked at the effect of maximum state of charge. So is there anything else that can impact the life of the battery? Well, yes, indeed there is. The university tells us that another couple of things we need to think about is the storage of batteries and specifically what temperature they're stored at and what charge rate of charge they've been stored at. Now, generally, storage is not going to be an issue for us because we're pretty much driving our cars every day. But if you're planning a long overseas trip and you're going to leave your car in the garage, you may want to have a bit of a look at this table. So what they're telling us is that lithium ion suffers from stress when exposed to heat. So does keeping a cell at a high charge voltage. A battery dwelling above 30 degrees Celsius is considered elevated temperature, and for most lithium ion, a voltage above 4.1 volts per cell is deemed as high voltage. Exposing the battery to high temperature and dwelling in a full state of charge for an extended time can be more stressful than cycling. So that's kind of interesting that this storage situation can have a greater impact on the battery life than the cycling parameters that we looked at earlier. So as I said, not important if you're not storing the battery, but if you are going away for a long trip, you might want to consider this. And for example, if you were to store your battery away at, or store your car at 25 degrees Celsius, so let's say you know room temperature more or less, and you stored it with 100% charge in the battery, after a year, it would degrade to 80%. So it's quite a significant loss and something that you, know, you might want to consider. Okay, so we've looked at all of these things now that impact the battery life, but where the rubber hits the road or where the charger hits the battery, what can we, what have we learned from this and what conclusions can we draw? Well, the university has done this wonderful research where they've subjected these batteries to what they call DST or dynamic stress tests. And what this is, is they, they basically hold the maximum state of charge at a, a fixed value and the depth of discharge at another value and they do this at a controlled temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. And then they run it through this cycle thousands of times of charging and discharging. And they record the level of degradation to the battery and put it in this chart. So over here, we can see on the left hand axis, we're looking at the attained capacity in the battery over cycles. So they all start at 100% as you'd expect, and then they degrade from there. Now, in terms of the degradation, you might say, oh, look, I'm happy if I've still got 80% in my battery after 10 years in my old Nissan Leaf, I'm pretty happy with that. 
But as a rule of thumb in the industry, it's commonly accepted that 90% is the, the threshold that you don't want to fall below with a battery and that it's considered to be the end of the battery's life. So what I'm doing, going to do here is just put a red line through that 90% level and that's the, the point that we need to look at. So for example, if we look at the black line, it crosses that red line here at about a thousand cycles. And if we look in the legend here, we can see that what we've done here is they've taken this maximum state of charge up to 100% each day, each cycle, and then they've discharged it down to a depth of discharge of 25%. And they've done that over a thousand cycles and the battery has got down to 90% of its original capacity. So in that situation, you could say this battery has a life, expected lifetime of about three years. Now, if we look across at the green line, we can see with this green line, it's crossing the 90% threshold at 2000 cycles. So we've now gone from being three years to being six years. And if we look in the legend, we can see for that green line, all they've done is that they've reduced the maximum state of charge to 85% from 100%. They haven't done anything with the depth of discharge. It's still going down to 25%. They've just knocked 15% off the maximum charge level. And by doing that, they've doubled the life of that battery. And you know they've gone from three years to six years. So that's pretty impressive. But then why stop there? Because if you look at this purple line here, it's crossing the 90% threshold way out here at four and a half thousand cycles. So now we're starting to talk about a life expectancy of 12 years, which is pretty good. If we look down in the legend, we can see what they've done there is reduce the maximum state of charge to 75%. And they've uh, reduced the amount of depth of discharge to 45% instead of 25%. So we're now working within a, a tighter range here of 30% of, of uh, maximum capacity. And by holding it between those two parameters there, they've managed to get this life expectancy out to um, 12 years, which is pretty impressive. Now, lastly, if we look at this orange line, well, it hasn't even crossed the 90% threshold yet. We might guess that it'll do it somewhere out towards 9,000 cycles, but at the moment, even at 8,500 cycles, we're looking at a battery here that's going to last for at least 23 years. So what's the secret to that? Well, if you look down the bottom in the legend, what they've done is they've reduced the maximum state of charge to 75%, same as the purple line, but now their depth of discharge is only 65%. So they're really in a tight band here of 10%. Of, they're basically just taking out 10% of the energy each cycle and holding the, the maximum state of charge at 75%. But by doing that, you know, they've massively increased the life of the battery. Now you might say, well, isn't that just the waste, a waste of a battery? I mean, you've got this battery that's got all this huge storage capacity and you're only effectively using 10% of it. And that would be right. But I would, my answer to that would be, well, go back to the original, to the start of this presentation. It turns out that most people only drive 20 kilometers or less each day. And that means that if they get home like I do and plug their car in, they, they, they probably haven't used 10% of their battery. And so therefore they're not charging more than 10% of their battery. So the only difference between those people and this chart, this orange line, is that you know, you're probably charging your battery at the moment up to maybe 80 or 90% if you're following the manufacturer's instructions, whereas you could be just charging it to 75% and discharging to 65% each time. And by doing that, you can make a huge difference to the, uh, the life of the battery. Okay, well, there you have it. So what can we conclude from all this? Well. I think it's fairly clear that if you're only driving a short distance each day, then it probably makes more sense just to charge, recharge your battery somewhere within a range of a maximum charge of maybe 60% being 10% greater than uh, the optimal 50% state of charge for a lithium battery and discharge maybe 10% below that, so down to 40%. I'm not a battery expert, I'm not a battery scientist, so I can't tell you definitively what you should do, but I can tell you that's what I'm going to be doing. In fact, I've already done it. I've set up, I've got a Tesla, so I can set the maximum state of charge, and I've set that to 60%, and I'm not charging, recharging every day now, plugging in every day. I leave it for a couple of days until it gets down to 40%, and then I'll plug it in and let it top back up to 60. So I'm always hovering around that ideal 50% state of charge. And I'm fairly confident after reviewing this information that that's going to give me the best outcome in terms of 
the longevity of the battery. So I'll leave it up to you to decide what you want to do. And if you've got any ideas or further information about this subject, or you've got any questions, please feel free to put those in the comments section and I'll endeavor to respond to you. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy your driving and stay safe out there. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.